Hello, and welcome to Pembroke in Depth. I'm Bill Chenard, the Pembroke Town Manager. With me today are the Chief Assessor from the Town of Pembroke, Kathy Salmon, and Assistant Assessor from the Town of Pembroke, Jean Gelati. Today we're going to talk about Pembroke's assessing practices. So guys, let's, let's start um, by just an overview of property assessments, property tax, and how it relates to the assessor's role. Well, I'll start, and, and thank you, Bill. We're happy to be here to give you a little information about our department. We'll start with property tax. Um, the assessors don't actually determine property tax. That gets determined at town meeting. And so when you go to town meeting and you vote on things like the budget, uh, any articles that have a debt exclusion or an override attached to it, all of that information goes into determining the total tax for the town. We call that the tax levy. And when town meeting is concluded, the voters have approved a total budget for the town and within that, the total tax to be collected by the town. Now Jeannie, maybe you and I should spend just a, a couple minutes talking about Proposition 2.5 because although town meeting determines the total tax levy or property tax to be collected by the town, it's Proposition 2.5 that regulates um, the, the amount that they can vote on. So Proposition 2.5 was a law that was enacted mid-1980s, and essentially it set a limit to how much the town could raise by way of property taxation. Basically, it took whatever the tax levy limit was from the previous fiscal year and allowed you to increase that by 2.5%. Now, some might think this might mean that your taxes can't go up more than 2.5%, but that is actually not the case at all. There are other factors that are involved in calculating the taxes on your property. Right, so, so one adjustment the town does make to that, we look at last year's tax levy, increase it 2.5%, but we're able to adjust for something that we call new growth, the state calls new growth. And that just allows communities to adjust for any new development, new construction that they've had in town. For instance, if you had a, a new 20 lot subdivision and 20 new homes and 30 new kids in schools, the communities need a way to make an adjustment to the tax levy to provide those additional services. So we are restricted to only increasing the levy by 2.5% but we make an adjustment for new growth. And the assessors are responsible for identifying and valuing that new growth, but everything that we do then has to be certified by the Department of Revenue. And that's it as far as what the town can do um, to increase uh, taxes from one year to the next. And in this case, when I say the town, I mean the town's leader, the town manager, the finance. But there is one more provision that allows for property tax owners um, to, to vote to have their taxes raised. So in addition to the 2.5% increase, the town's voters, and by voters I mean the people at town meeting or in the ballot box, they can decide that they would like to increase their taxes by way of a debt exclusion or an override. So in the past we've decided that we'd like new school roofs or new community center. And if the townspeople decide to vote on that, that also impacts the taxes. Right. So that's um, just kind of a snapshot at, at property tax. And again, you can kind of hear in that the assessors don't really have a role in, in driving the tax. What our responsibility is, is in valuing the properties. So in Massachusetts, the property tax law is structured that everybody pays their fair, sh their fair share of that burden based on the value of their property. So if somebody has a property worth 600000 and somebody else has a property worth 300000 the owner of the six pays twice as much as the owner of the three because of course their property is worth twice as much. So our job is to value all the properties. And we value them based on a fair market value. But that value is not a current fair market value. It's actually based on a previous January 1st. So in whatever fiscal year we're in, for example, we're in fiscal 23, and in January we're going to have some new bills come out. January of 23, you'll get a bill that has a value. That value is based on the market as of the previous January 1st. And then those values hold for a whole year. So 
depending on where you are in the um, process, those values could be anywhere from 12 to 24 months dated. Um, so how do we value the properties? Well, we're, we're always looking at, um, we're always collecting and analyzing market data because of course the real estate market changes, it goes up, it goes down. Um, so we've got to measure those trends. And at the same time, we're out collecting and analyzing and updating the physical data at the properties because that data changes all the time as well. And it's these two ongoing um, efforts that allow us to value and then revalue all of the properties each and every year. Yeah, so just I just want to make one quick note. Um, I, I know that we talked a little bit about debt exclusions and operating overrides. One big difference between debt exclusions and operating overrides mm -hmm. is an operating override is a permanent addition to the tax base. Debt exclusions are only alive for as long as the town is paying off that debt. So it's a significant difference. Mm -hmm. um, and, and in Massachusetts, debt exclusions are somewhat common. Operating overrides, especially in the South Shore, are not very common. Mm -hmm. So sure. um, can we talk a little bit about how market value affects assessments? So if your home sells for you know, X amount of dollars, how does that affect the assessment? So when we go out, when we change all the assessments, and this is done yearly, and by mass general laws, we need to follow what's going on in the market. As Kathy said before, when the market's going up, assessments going up. When the markets are going down, assessments are going down. And in order to do this, we need to do two separate things. We need to inspect all the properties that have sold in the past year. So fiscal year 23, which is what we're currently in right now, is based on January 1st of 22. And we need to look at all the sales that happened in 2021. To do this, we need to go out to the properties themselves. And we need to do interior and exterior inspections. And actually, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the property owners mm -hmm. in the town because they are very cooperative with our attempts to inspect. We do get into the majority of the homes in the town of Pembroke, and it is because of that cooperation. Mm -hmm. It makes our jobs easier, and we really appreciate it. So when we come to your home, on the exterior of the property, we might look at, is there a shed? Is there a pool? Do they have a detached garage? On the interior of the property, we're looking at things like, is there a finished basement? How many bathrooms are there? Have they been renovated? Is there an unfinished walk-up attic? Everything that a potential buyer or a realtor or an appraiser is going to look at to determine the value of the property, those are the same things that we look at because it does affect the values. Mm -hmm. Now the secondary part of that inspection process is that we need to inspect all the properties in the town on a routine basis. And we do this because we need to make sure that the information that we have is most accurate and up-to-date as possible. Because obviously as times change and the years go by, properties do change. Maybe mm -hmm. they depreciate more, maybe they add something, maybe they take something away, but all that information needs to be ascertained in order to make our assessments change and fluctuate with the market each year. Good. Excellent. So can we can we so we've talked now how market value affects assessments. Let's talk a little bit um, because it's a different story. Um, how market value affects taxes? Okay. Um, maybe what we can do first is we can go to um, the. Let's take a quick look at what's been happening at those oh, um, the market the market values, and then we can sure. talk about how yeah. that's affected assessments, and then how that. Mm -hmm. changes the taxes. We're going to show a slide, slide number one, and it is going to show what has been happening in the market for the average single family sale price for the past eight years or so. As you can see from the slide, on the left hand side, the blue bar, it shows that in 2014, the average single family sale price was about $392,000. Now between 14 and 2019, the green bar, there was an incremental increase in the average single family sale prices throughout those years. In 2020, we saw a bigger increase in the sale prices where it went from $463,000 in 2019 to $501,000 in 2020. In calendar year 2021, which again is the last full year we had to analyze, we saw a substantial increase in the average single family sale prices 
it went up almost 18%. Mm -hmm. So that last year, the average single family sale price was $587,000. Now obviously you can see that there's a big increase between 2014 and 2021. Now as previously stated, sale prices and assessments do go hand in hand. So the next slide we're going to look at is going to show what has happened to the assessments during the past decade. On the top of the slide, it has the fiscal year 2012 single family property assessments. Back then, the majority of the homes in the town, almost 70%, were assessed at less than $350,000. Only 4% of the homes in to fiscal year 2012 were assessed at over 550,000. Now fast forward 10 years. Fiscal year 22, the majority of the homes in the town, 61% of them, are assessed between $350,000 and $550,000. Only 19% are assessed at less than $350,000 and 20% are assessed at over $550,000. So as you can see between these two slides, the sale prices are going up, assessments are going up. Any change in the market has a direct impact on the changes of the assessments. Bill, I think I, I'll go back to your uh, question right now um, because we do get that question a lot. When we see these changing sale prices, um, whether they're going up or down, but especially now that they're going up, people do ask, how does this increase in value, how does the change in the market value affect my taxes? Because Really, that is people's concern. Are my taxes going to go through the roof if these values are going through the roof? So we have a few slides that we hope um, will, will help us with that. So if we're going to go to slide three, um, what we're going to talk about is what was our actual data for fiscal year 22? And we start with, again, the tax levy. That gets determined at town meeting. And last year, it was determined that the total tax for the town was going to be uh, $45.9 million. And last year, the actual assessed values were just over $3.2 billion. If we add up all of the values for all of the properties, that was the value. Um, now, the tax rate is just simply a calculation of what does every taxpayer have to pay per $1,000 of assessed value to get to that total tax levy. So $45.9 million with values at $3.2 billion, gave us a tax rate of $14.15. This was actual data in 22. Now we're going to go to the next slide, slide four, and we're going to do a what-if scenario. And the what-if is, well, what if last year the values had actually been 25% higher? And we're doing this just to try to demonstrate what effect does a change in market have on your actual property tax. So we'll follow this through. We know that the tax levy couldn't change. If that's voted at town meeting as 45.9 and property, uh, Prop 2.5 restricts it at 45.9, that's what it is. So even if last year our values had gone up by 25%, um, we would have gone to figure out what is that tax rate. That tax rate would have dropped, of course, because we can only collect the 45.9. Now in the next slide, slide five, we're doing the opposite what if scenario. Well, what if last year the property values had dropped by 25%? Well, again, our tax levy can't change. The total value would have dropped. When that total value drops, that causes the tax rate to increase. Again, because we need to collect the same 45.9 million. So this last slide, slide six, we're hoping shows that the change in a market value doesn't have any direct reflection, uh, effect on your total tax. You'll see in the first line the actual 22 data, the um, sample assessment that I'm using, a $500,000 home, would have been taxed at a rate of $1,415 and that homeowner would have paid $7,075 in total tax. In example one, this is where we said, well, let's assume every single property went up 25% across the board. Well, that $500,000 home would no longer be worth $500,000. It would have been worth six twenty-five. dollars But we know when all the values go up, it causes the rate to go down. So again, if we calculate the six twenty-five dollars times that reduced tax rate, 
it's still the $7,075 in total tax. And then in the last example where we assumed it went down, you'd see that that $500,000 home would not, it would have reduced down to a value of 375 at a higher tax rate. But again, the total tax would be just over $7,000. So the change in a market value does not directly affect the change in property tax. Yeah, so that, that's, that's a perfect example that, that clearly shows that it's the tax levy that really drives the assessment. Um, you know, market value will cause adjustments in the tax rate because it's just a mathematical formula, uh, and, and that's important to remember. However, there's, there's one other important item I want to point out. If you have a vacant lot and you build a house on it, <laughs> that will change your yeah. assessment. You're, you're changing Certainly. the conditions that are assessed. So um, don't, don't come tell us that you told <laughs> us that, you're, that, that market value doesn't change assessment. It generally, right. if you have the same house, it doesn't change assessment. That's correct. So, Good point. Um, I'm glad you yeah, took a moment to put because that Because there's going to be someone that, that you know, <laughs> there's, there's, always, there's always one of those people like me that, that questions everything. Okay. So, Thank you. Um, so let's change a little bit. Let's, let's now talk about, uh, we've talked about the assessment and, and how market value assess, uh, affects assessment and, and the fact that the, you know, the taxes aren't really affected by a change in market value because of the adjustment of the tax rate. So let's change a little bit and let's talk about um, what relief we can offer taxpayers uh, in, in you know, property exemptions? Actually, we do get asked quite a bit, is there anything I can do in order to reduce the amount of taxes that I pay on my property? And there are several state-regulated real estate exemptions that are available. And an exemption is something that is available to a certain segment of the population that meets the Massachusetts general law guidelines and restrictions. These guidelines and restrictions, the, the amounts necessary for income and assets and the amount that is reduced from your taxes, they do fluctuate yearly. And the most, the most current information, in addition to the applications themselves, they will be available in our office in September. So we welcome anyone to come in and ask any questions that you have. But we just want to give people the most, uh, just a broad general overview of the exemptions themselves. So the three most commonly utilized exemptions in Pembroke are the senior exemption, one of which you must be 65 years of age or older, and it is an income and an asset driven exemption, which means you need to meet the Massachusetts guidelines for income and assets on the property owners. The second senior exemption that we utilize the most is the over 70 years, 70 years of age and older, and this is strictly an asset driven exemption. There's another exemption for surviving spouses. Again, it is an asset-driven exemption. And the last one is the veterans exemption, where the person has a service-connected disability that's determined by the Veterans Administration. These exemptions and all the other exemptions, they need to be filed annually. And what we do in the town, in our office, is we send out reminder postcards to everyone who has filed in the past fiscal year. Mm -hmm just to make sure that they know, oh, it is time to come in and file. And we will be doing that in September. But if you would like to be added to the list, anyone out there who would like to be added to the list, please don't hesitate to reach out to us by way of phone call or email. And we will have on the town's website, on the town assessor's department's page, if you click on the link there, you'll be able to add your name and address to that reminder list, and we'll make sure that we send you out the postcard. Oh, in addition, we also have a um, presentation that we usually held at the council, that's held at the Council on Aging in the fall, just going over all the exemptions, how to file them, how to get the information to us. If you need any help with the applications themselves, we are always more than happy and readily available to help out any, in any way we possibly can. Super. So just, just a quick recap on exemptions. Um, if you have questions, you can certainly contact the assessor's office. Uh, the information is available there. Uh, the information is also available on the website, and, and information on how to contact them is available on our website, which is um, pembroke-ma.gov. Um, uh, so anybody wants to take a look, please do. We encourage people to do that. Um, exemptions, oh, you're right. I've, mm -hmm. I've heard people in the past tell me, well, I don't really want to do that. I, I don't feel that it's right. It is your right. You've earned right. it. That's you know, right. If you're a right. veteran or a disabled veteran or if you're a senior, 
um, you know, that qualifies for those exemptions, please take advantage of that. There are a few others out there. Um, you know, take a look at our website uh, or contact the assessors to, to, to get an opportunity at those. Um, I do want to shift gears now. Uh, one other big area that the assessors um, uh, deal with on a regular basis um, is motor vehicle excise tax. Um, so can we talk a little bit about motor vehicle excise tax and how that is assessed, where the assessments come from, what drives the value, and, and all of those factors? Sure. Um, I think we have a slide we can refer to, slide seven on this. Um, and we'll just spend uh, really just a couple minutes on this. Um, we do get questions on the motor vehicle excise uh, tax. So these bills are actually generated at the um, Registry of Motor Vehicles. They generate the bills, but it's dictated by Mass General Law how they do that. So um, we have a slide that gives the, in the top section of the slide, it's called the tax value of the vehicle. And, and I should say that the, on the bill, when you see the vehicle for the car, that is not market value, that's not blue book value, it is simply a tax value as dictated by Mass General Law. And the way that the um, law reads is that the value is always based off the original manufacturer's suggested retail price. And of course the registry has that because they have your year, your make, your model, um, and your VIN number. So um, there's a lot of information in the formulas of the law, but we thought it would be easier to just refer to an example. And I won't go through every single year, but I'll give you a, a couple. Um, and we're looking at the bottom section of the slide, the blue section. It's just an example of how does the excise tax work. And in this example, we've got a 2023 car with an MSRP of $50,000. So the law reads that in the year preceding the year of manufacture. What that means is if in 2022 you buy a 2023 car, um, the tax value is 50% of the MSRP. So in this uh, example, 50% of the 50,000 would give you a tax value of 25,000. Now motor vehicle excise tax is paid at a rate of $25 per thousand. It's different and separate from property tax. So in this example, the um, car would be taxed at an excise tax for the, that year for $625. In the next year, the year of the manufacturer, it's 90% of the MSRP. 90% of $50,000 gives you a tax value of $45,000. So your excise tax that year would be $1,125. And it continues like that until the fifth and every succeeding year after that when it reduces down to a 10% of the original MSRP. So in this example, your tax value would be 5,000. Your excise tax for the year would be 125 for the fifth and every year after that. Um, and I would say the most important thing we want to uh, give you in, in this um, informational um, meeting is just if you ever do anything with your car, if you cancel a plate, if you transfer a plate, if you sell your car, trade in a car, call the assessor's office or come by or email us um, because you may be eligible for an abatement. It is not automatic. Although the registry generates the bills and sends them to us, we don't then get the follow-up of cancellations and we don't know who's sold or got rid of a car. So um, if you take anything from this little segment, if you do something with your car, mid-year or something with your plate, just reach out. We'll tell you what you need to do, do you qualify for an abatement, and we'll help you to get that. Um, and that is is really the um, motor vehicle excise tax in a nutshell. So, thank you, Kathy. So just to keep uh, a quick recap, uh, remember that uh, assessed value is not market value for motor <laughs> vehicles. It's driven by Mass General Law Chapter 60A, um, and it's assessed as a percentage. Um, the tax rate is not the tax rate f of the town for real estate and personal property taxes. Uh, it is set by statute at $25 and is actually the same tax rate in every community in the Commonwealth. Mm -hmm. So at this point, I want to take the time to thank Kathy and Jean. Uh, awesome job today. And as I always do, um, you know, thank PAC TV, their tremendous partner to the town of Pembroke. Uh, we were able to get so much information out to our residents and the, and the population because of their activities. So thank, PAC, thank you, PAC TV. Next month, we're going to be talking about building permit activity, uh, how to apply for a building permit, and, and what those are 
required. Um, so tune in next month, um, and thank you very much.